Remember the old ad campaign where the satisfied coffee drinker discovers that his fancy restaurant brew is actually Folgers Crystals? Well, you gotta wonder what kind of spit take that guy would give upon learning the coffee had fallen out of the back end of an elephant. Yes, mmm, dung beans. Turns out that one of the most world's most expensive coffees is a strain that has been carefully passed through really big bowels. And a Canadian entrepreneur is betting a fortune that you'll want some. Off to Thailand in search of a taste, Here's ABC's Mohamed Leela. We set off deep into the jungle. We're on our way right now to the elephant sanctuary. The fog on this river is so thick that in some areas, you can hardly see a thing. We journeyed by water, by foot, and then a rusty, rickety jeep over dirt roads and rugged mountainsides. And it was right about here, just as we arrived, that this story really went to the dumps. One of the elephants is just, oh wow, relieved itself. <laughs> just when you thought you've hit the peak of your career in network television, you uh, you wind up walking into elephant dump. <laughs> For Canadian businessman Blake Dinkin, this is just another day at the office. This is the fruits of our labor. I mean, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Those fruits, of course, well, they're not really fruits at all. So this is it. You can't see it, but lumped into that shovel is a fresh pile of coffee beans that were <clears throat> deposited by an elephant. <laughs> to you and I, it might all seem a little bit, well, out there. But Dinkin is betting his brew from number two is the next big thing in the coffee world. Yeah. Seriously. I mean, really? Mm. Coffee from elephants? This is a special, unique coffee that is for a, a minority of people who are open-minded and adventurous and who want to try something different. Different is what Black Ivory Coffee is all about. An elephant's digestive system supposedly breaks down the proteins of the coffee bean. Think of it like a natural slow cooker, producing a taste like nothing else. <laughs> Even at $50 a serving, the coffee drinkers we spoke to, well, they all said, bottoms up. So I'm here with Mike Wilson. Mike, you're from? San Francisco, California. And you've tried the coffee? I have. It's rich and smooth. Mm -hmm. You're saying it's rich and it's smooth, but there's an elephant's butt right in the background. I, I understand. <laughs> That laughter is music to Dinkin's ears. Here we go. It all starts here, this remote mountainside where the beans are grown. Local villagers pick, wash, and dry the beans and then feed them to the elephants. So this is cooking for elephants 101. <laughs> it's a mixture of coffee beans, rice, fruit, water, and fiber. So you know when we eat fiber, there's a certain reaction. It wouldn't hurt. <laughs> Anywhere from 15 to 70 hours later, the beans are ready to be, uh, recovered. Yeah, I'm, uh, gonna wear gloves for this. Oh, yeah, yeah, this is the highlight of my career. If it looks dirty, yeah, it is. The crappuccino jokes aside, Dinkin says business is booming. But what about the elephants? I mean, is it safe for animals to be eating that much coffee? There are going to be people out there that are going to say, you know what, you're just out to make a quick buck. We operate in a transparent manner. Tourists can come and see the production. Vets are here to inspect that the elephants are well taken care of. I've worked with food scientists, wildlife experts, pick the best sanctuary. It's all on my own money. Thank you. And as for the coffee, well, by the time it's roasted and cleaned, you know, it tastes nothing like that four-letter word we're not supposed to say on TV. Bon appétit. It's got an earthy, kind of nutty taste to it. Very rich tasting, very flavorful. In the end, it may not even matter what it tastes like. Part of the point is just to be able to say you've tried it. After all, you know what they say, it's good to the last dropping. For Nightline, I'm Mohamed Lila in the Golden Triangle in Thailand.